When James and I first started dating, he gave me this cheap jewelry set that was probably $99. And I threw it out and I told him I don't want everybody that type of stuff again. You're going to decide the story that you want to tell yourself. You are going to decide how this story starts going from now on. And the more you tell yourself, no, mind, we're actually not going there anymore and this is the way we're going, you're going to change not only your mind, but you're also going to recode your cellular DNA so that way your energetic frequency and your mindset are supporting you to be an energetic match for the life that you desire to have. You need to be so f delusional. Say you have a party, an event, a meeting, walk into that space as if every single person in that room is waiting for you. And they need something from you. Number one, I will never talk poorly about myself, neither out loud or in my head, even if it's just for a second. Number two, I will never allow someone into my life who doesn't treat me the way that I deserve or desire simply because I like the person. There's this expectation to consistently feel 100% content and 100% like good about ourselves. And I think that is so unrealistic and so impractical. Let's stop normalizing main character energy all the time because two girls- It has to stop. It actually, it, people are deranged. You agree? Yes. Let's normalize sometimes being like, this season, I'm in the back. Yes. How do you love yourself? Because I talk about it all the time. So I made a list of how to love yourself. And it's even in poster and postcard form now. But number one on that list of how to love yourself is to stop all criticism. Listen, the more you love yourself, the easier it becomes to detach from things that don't love you. That's what living in true main character energy is. Hello, as a young woman online, I see a lot of content about self-love and self-care and manifestation and affirmations and just basically loving yourself, surrounding yourself with the idea that we as women should be uplifting ourselves, like all of the trends on TikTok, such as hot girl summer, hot girl walk, or the gorgeous, gorgeous girls do whatever it is that they do. I'm also a writer of fiction, so the concept of being a main character intrigues me. And the longer I wander the internet, the more I wonder if those main characters that you see in Starbucks disrespecting the workers are really just on an extreme self-love kick. The idea of self-love has been around since the 50s. It's a common practice within mental health circles to which someone who often gets tripped up on the negatives about themselves because they compare themselves to others begins to make changes in how they speak to themselves and how they view themselves. For instance, if you're always thinking about how you hate your body or how your face card declines, then you might, when those thoughts arise, say instead, I am beautiful, I am attractive, I am worthy of a guy's attention even if in that moment you don't actually believe it. Self-love is the attempt to make yourself feel better through non-physical means, like manifestations and affirmations. It's conceptual and philosophical, and it's the hope that by prioritizing yourself more and accepting who you believe you really are, you'll like yourself more, and in turn, others will like you more too. You'll reach an elevated state of mind, You'll cure your insecurity by telling yourself that you are perfect the way you are if you say it enough times. We tell ourselves that we are worthy of love, that we are beautiful, that our self-actualization will save us. We just have to be in the right state of mind and everything will work out. That in order for others to love you, you must first love yourself. And it is proven that how we speak affects how we think and affects our headspace so if we speak negatively whether to ourselves or about other people we will feel negative we will be focusing on the negatives so if you you know write down three things that you're grateful for every morning you will in time become more positive and content with your life and less negative but self-love isn't just being positive it is specifically being positive about yourself being positive about how you view you and prioritizing your happiness and your well-being. Main character syndrome is viewing oneself as most important. It's thinking that the whole world revolves around you. Everyone becomes a secondary character to your needs and your wants. You prioritize yourself in every situation. 
because you've romanticized yourself and your capabilities and your worth to an unrealistic point. When you view yourself as the main character, every little inconvenience in life becomes an attack from the villain. And who cares what's happening to all the antagonists and NPCs as long as the main character gets their happy ending. It's common in Karens, oddly enough. They believe that the rest of the world should bend to the will of an unhappily married, middle-aged woman. Although I know that anybody can be a Karen, it's a state of mind, not a science. But if you've ever witnessed a Karen in the wild, you know that they will go to bizarre lengths to demand the respect and admiration that they think they deserve, such as um, assault, vitriol, vandalism, abusing law enforcement, law enforcement and intimidation tactics. Simply because someone is walking on their sidewalk or because a house in their HOA has their grass half a centimeter above regulation. I'm convinced they're all secretly dosed up on opiates and essential oils and also self-loathing. Many influencers have been called out for acting as if they think they're the main character. From the many stories centering an influencer expecting free services in exchange for publicity and exposure on the internet to being outright mean to people simply because they are not at the same elite level that they are even going as far as being rude to other influencers simply because they have a smaller following but also the average person can also find themselves acting as if the world revolves around them either because they can hide behind a screen or because they simply don't understand how internet interactions translate to the real world. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that video of the woman on the plane singing her song to everyone, unprompted. Like, she was just like, guys, I have this song and I'm gonna, you know, sing it to you now. It means a lot to me and everyone's on the plane like, Then there was also the bean soup incident where this woman posted a video of a bean soup recipe on TikTok that was supposed to help you with some health thing, like it was supposed to be good for your gut or something. And it was it was fine video, nothing was wrong with it. She wasn't doing anything wrong, but every not everyone, people in the comments were saying, well, well, what if I don't like beans? What do I do if I don't like beans? Like, baby girl, swipe them. You don't have to watch the video. It's obviously not for you if you don't like beans. <laughs> or anyone who records people in public without their consent <laughs> and posts it online. But anyway, in these instances, it's less about placing yourself in the main character position and more about the underlying belief that everyone should be considering you at all times, which is still like a, you know, I'm the main character, look at me, the world revolves around me. But even if you're just making a video about a recipe, they expect you to take into consideration the people who don't like the ingredients in the recipe. That's like going to a Taylor Swift concert and wondering why she isn't singing Dua Lipa songs. Not everything is going to be catered to you. In fact, the majority of the things on the internet are not catered to you, despite what your algorithm wants you to think. You're gonna have to wade through a lot of stuff catering to a lot of different people to get to the things that you're interested in or the things that are applicable to you. You can't go onto your For You page on TikTok or on YouTube or on Instagram and expect everything to be catered to the very specific need that you have at that time. You have to go into the search bar and search what you need. And the only possible way to seriously and unironically place yourself in the state of mind required to view oneself as the main character, as if everyone should prioritize you above themselves, you have to also view everyone as less important and in the process, dehumanizing them. The world cannot orbit around you without forcing everyone else to move for you. And that's selfish? Can we agree? I mean, would you wanna hang out with someone like that? Didn't think so. There was a quote I heard, I think on Criminal Minds, which I could not for the life of me find for this video, but it basically said, in order to do wrong against someone, you must first dehumanize them. And 
it just makes me wonder how often I accidentally dehumanize other people because I don't think that their wants are as important as mine. Now, when I'm talking about this main character thing, I'm obviously not talking about the playful joking that we do. It was a fun little trend a while ago to, predominantly amongst girls, to pretend that you were the main character. Maybe it was a book talk thing, I don't know. But you pretend that you're a main character in a storybook or a fairy tale. But it was less about how you're treated in reality and more about the fantasy of being a princess swept off her feet, where the happy ending is just around the corner like a form of escapism. You know, it's fun and it's girly pop. However, it's very different when you try to merge what is fantasy and what you know is fiction and not real with reality, forcing people around you to pedestalize you like a prized possession. Obviously not everyone is waking up and saying their daily Snoop Dogg affirmations like, I am the main character and everyone will kneel before me. I'm not saying that that's what they're doing. I mean, that'd be psycho killer crazy weird if it were, and you would be disappointed because that's not gonna happen. But there are people that think that they are the most important person in their sphere, and like to a ridiculous degree. The likelihood that they use the main character is probably slim, but they do mold their entire identity around being someone of high value. It's the girls who will drop a man simply because he didn't take them to the most expensive restaurant on a first date. The influencers, like I mentioned, who berate the poor baker online simply because they didn't agree to make them a free cake. It's the girls who define themselves by their zodiac sign and their Myers-Briggs test and their Enneagram, excusing bad behavior because it's just their personality type. And this is where I believe self-love and the main character syndrome can intersect. When you're viewing everyone else as a tool to get you where you think you deserve to be, you are also saying that you love yourself more than them. You're saying that you're better than them. I understand us girls like to live in the land of comfort. We like are pretty things and we like to feel like pretty things. It's hard to feel like a pretty thing when you are constantly focused on your flaws. I mean this is true for men too, but they rarely utilize the term self-love as we girls do because they prefer more crude methods of reaching their potential. And on that note, I'm gonna go off on a tangent because it interests me. Have you ever wondered why girls are more drawn to the trendy concept of self-love than boys? I'll tell you why. And no, it's not because boys don't love themselves. They love themselves too much sometimes, just as we girls can. Look at the men of fresh and fit and those alpha males who believe that success makes them a better man. The difference is in how men and women are motivated. Men tend to feel motivated to work harder when you tell them where they're lacking or when you point out the negative truths about them and or their circumstances. And yes, it's typically harsher. Male spaces are, aren't as cushy as female spaces. They don't gravitate to fluffy words to get them to push themselves. They need to be told their flaws so that they can improve upon them and become a capable, respectable man. It feeds their competitiveness. When they have to work for it, it makes them feel accomplished. Then the reward of someone saying, you're worthy, feels earned. If someone were to say that to a man beforehand, they may view it as empty because they haven't earned it yet. Whereas with women, it's totally different. Women need the encouragement before they start their journey. They need to know that they'll still be worthy even if they fail. They need to have their insecurities wiped away before they even start whatever it is that they're doing, or they won't see the point in putting in the work. The difference in motivation can affect how men and women approach goal setting and achievement, and both can have pros or cons. Obviously, there are exceptions. Girls can be hyper strict with themselves. Maybe they're perfectionists, and weaving a fantasy is impossible when it doesn't align with what they know is fact. And there are men that need to feel safe before they embark on a goal. Embark, that's a good word. I'm glad I used that. But on average, the standard is true. That's why women clutch to their self-love before they do anything, 
They need to know that they're worthy of love no matter what happens, even if the only person telling themselves that is themselves. And that's fine. I am a gymnastics coach and I see this all the time with the girls that I teach. The girls can't do something either because they're scared or because they're afraid of what everyone else will think if they mess up, if they don't get the skill right away. And I have to reassure them that they can do it, that it's okay not to get it right away. It's normal to struggle and no one is gonna judge them, that I'll be with them every step of the way, that they're not alone in the journey. So with that, self-love can be a helpful motivator to reach your goals and create better habits. As a private exchange with yourself, it can be incredibly useful, like a pep talk. But too many people treat self-love as the goal, <laughs> not just a motivator that helps you reach your goal. And that is the problem that I want to talk about today. Our goal in life should not be to prop ourselves up above others. If that's your idea of success, you're going to be very miserable and very lonely. In fact, I guarantee you'll find more satisfaction in sacrificing things to help others. Putting yourself behind others is a much better view than looking down your nose at them. And honestly, I could stop the video there, but I'm not going to because I like to yap. Could you imagine if that were actually the purpose in life? Just loving yourself? Could you imagine if that were the purpose and all 8 billion people in the world thought that way? Because while it is true that everyone should be treated with love and respect, simply because they are human beings with a soul, maybe you've done some really crappy things and no one wants to give you love. At that point, shouldn't you care more about becoming a better person for the sake of those around you? Not loving yourself the way that you are and perpetuating a cycle of being ignorant to your flaws and reasoning, a reasoning away valid criticisms with, they just don't understand me. It's very reminiscent of the girls who say, I'm mean because I'm a Scorpio and that's just the way I am. If you can't handle that, then you don't deserve to be in my life. Okay, and you're insufferable to be around. No one wants to be your friend. Is it still worth it? Call me crazy, but shame is not always bad. I actually might do a video on that because people have forgotten that, okay? If you're feeling shame, there's probably a reason why. Social pressure is not always bad, not because we should live for other people, but because there is a moral standard that societies tend to lean towards, and we often find our desires leading us away from what is morally right. It's just kind of like an indicator of whether you're, you know, doing good things and are acting like a good person. Anyway, often it's more important to recognize your flaws and improve upon them than to accept yourself when you're at your worst. That is a delusional mindset and it will turn into narcissism. Part of doing what's best for you is learning how to humble yourself and take criticism with grace. It's understanding that based on our actions, we don't always deserve to be loved in the way that we think we should be loved. You have to put in the work just like you have to put in the work to be an entrepreneur or whatever it is kids grind away at to be these days. Ooh, I said that like I was a 50 year old woman. I am a kid, okay? Anyway, there is a difference between deserving love and being lovable. That's a big downside of self-love is that we tend to have too much compassion for ourselves and we fail to hold ourselves accountable. You make a mistake and then you explain it away because blaming yourself feels like an attack on your self-worth. You treat yourself to every little treat every time something a little bit good happens, even if your budget is crying out for help. You hold the flaws of others against them and then expect them to let those same flaws pass in you. Sometimes you have to pull up your big girl pants and say, wow, that relationship ended because of my own terrible actions. They deserve an apology from me, not the other way around. Self-improvement, you see, is not equal to self-love. In our current language landscape, words are becoming meaningless. <laughs> they get passed around at such a high rate by people that were never aware of what they actually meant in the first place, that by the time they've reached you, they've branched off into something experiential. Maybe you don't think that word means that, but I do, and that's all that matters. So I'm gonna use it how I wanna use it. It's a whole nother conversation to talk about the permeance in language because languages are always evolving. 
not at a rate such like this, but they are always evolving. But that's a whole nother conversation and you know what I'm trying to get at. Gaslighting, toxic masculinity, pick me. All three of these are phrases that get taken out of context and used incorrectly daily. They're applied to things that don't really fall under their umbrella, but they feel like they should. And that's how words change. We associate certain things together so closely that they become synonymous, as if self-improvement and self-care cannot exist outside the bounds of self-love. And to do those things is loving yourself, I guess. I mean, I've never thought about that like that, and I think a lot of people don't really think that hard about it. But doing what's best for you does not always manifest itself in the ways that these self-love gurus want you to think that it does. It's not going to feel like tapping into some deep set power that's been lurking within you your whole life. Sometimes doing what's best for you is actually prioritizing yourself less to acknowledge that you actually aren't always lovable. But yeah, our modern society has a really screwed up sense of what words and meanings of words are like love specifically in the west we say we love starbucks and then we say we love our children as if the two are of the same worth and we know they aren't of the same worth but we only have one word for love and so you often have to read the context and read between the lines in order to gauge the truth about it whereas other languages have many words for love but love is something that we give love is an action of commitment of affection we can feel love for other people, but if we don't turn that emotion into an action, the emotion means nothing. And acting on that love often looks a lot like putting yourself last. In order to love others, you have to sacrifice things for them. And you can't do that when you're loving yourself because the only thing to sacrifice when you're loving yourself is other people, the good ones and the bad ones. I'm not talking about staying in a dangerous or toxic situation out of fear of hurting the feelings of the person that is hurting us. There is value in letting people go for your own well-being, but it's easy to combine the big things that we will not stand for, the monumental things with the small insignificant things that actually they aren't really hurting us. We just feel like they are because it's not making us feel good. Just because something someone does makes you feel bad or puts you in a upset mood does not mean that they're hurting you. That's a touchy one. But like when I say insig insignificant things, I'm talking about a girl getting upset and berating a guy for taking her to the cheesecake factory on a first date. Wild. It's one thing to cut someone off because of abuse or repeated offenses of neglect and being taken for granted after attempts at working things out on your end. It's a very different thing when you cut someone off for occasional forgetfulness, unrealistic expectations, or failing to meet a standard that only benefits you. I'm not saying to lay yourself on the line in every situation. Please don't take my words out of context. Obviously, you need to stick up for yourself if you're being mistreated. Prioritize self-care and have grace with yourself through the process of life. You are not perfect and you shouldn't expect yourself to be perfect 100% of the time. And really the issue isn't trying to be perfect in terms of always trying to do what is right, but trying to be perfect because you are constantly comparing yourself to other people in ways that don't relate to your worth at all. That's how dysmorphia and disorders form. I'm not advocating for self-destructive actions or habits. I'm not advocating for people to people please to the point of hurting themselves. The opposite of self-love is also an extreme. Don't avoid one problem by defaulting to another unhealthy mindset. If you love yourself to the point of viewing yourself as the main character, you are self-centered and narcissistic because you're thinking about your standing in society all the time. And self-hate is also self-centered because you're thinking about your standing in society at all time i don't mean like a clinical diagnosis of narcissism i mean the the act of focusing on yourself and i want to make it very clear that i don't think people who hate or loathe themselves are intentionally doing this because it's obviously all consuming when you don't think you're worth love 
at all, or you don't find any worth in yourself. I want to have an abundance of grace and love for those people. It just is a fact that when you are always thinking about yourself, good thoughts or bad thoughts, you are centering your brain on yourself. You are being self-centered. Just as we should not hate others, we should not hate ourselves. We should treat others with love and respect as, or we should treat ourselves with love and respect as we treat others that way. God loves you. God made you. Talking badly about yourself makes him as sad as when you talk badly about other people. Every human is equal. There is a sweet spot, a sweet spot between self-love and self-hate where everything is balanced. It's a very thin, shaky line, and we as humans tend to be very bad at staying on that thin and shaky line, but it's there and we should strive for it. Self-neutrality, if you will. Self-forgetfulness. Self-love and the idea that you are the most important person in your life, so do everything for you, wipes away shame and replaces it with pride. Stunting growth and effectively rewiring your brain to ignore areas in which you are lacking. Again, doing what's good for you, like addressing your shortcomings, does not feel good. It's embarrassing and challenging and no one wants to do it. Self-love, as many people use it today, can help breed confidence and healthy habits that are, you know, good and should be encouraged. But one bad wellness guru online and suddenly you're going down a path that can have the opposite effect of what you're trying to achieve, where you leave the realm of reality and pass into a fantasy world built entirely around the main character, which is you. Taking care of yourself is good. Self-care is active. It's not passive. It's tangible and healthy because we can agree. We can all agree on what basic care is. It's staying hydrated, staying active. It's getting enough sleep and keeping good hygiene. When you take care of yourself physically, you feel better mentally. You're more enjoyable to be around. We have differences, sure, like some people have to take insulin daily, but we can all agree that that is a need for them. Self-improvement is also in the same vein. We improve on the parts of ourselves that we deem not up to par with society's standard of what is a good person, or maybe your standard of what is a good person. So maybe that's fixing how we treat others or improving what we contribute to our community. Self-improvement is simply the act of improving upon your flaws. Self-love, however, while a good motivator for reaching your goals, is strictly applied to yourself. It has nothing to do with how you treat others. It's focusing on your wellness and your happiness. And while a lot of the time that means doing self-care or self-improvement, other times we conflate our ideas of financial success and status as a need which we must obtain as one would obtain water every day or by getting richer or treated luxuriously we are doing self-care it's saying i think i deserve to be treated this way so i need to be treated this way like it's a basic human right for you to treat me this way and if you don't then i don't need you in my life or i will make your life a living hell and there is nothing wrong with wanting to be successful and financially secure. If you're passionate about something, do everything in your means to achieve that, but not at the cost of the people around you, not at the cost of your support system, and definitely not if it's causing you to be rude to strangers in a one-off interaction because you believe you live in an upper echelon of existence. Our interests are not needs, no matter how badly we want them mistreating others because they might be inconveniencing those interests is wrong. So wear that outfit that you're scared to wear. Do your makeup in a fun way. Talk in a transatlantic accent if you want. These are actions like self-care and self-improvement that boost your confidence and make you feel more like you. Don't be rude to your waiter at the restaurant. They're just doing their job. As a Christian, I hold the view that no one is good. No one deserves love more than another. We all have sinful desires that are enticing because they make us feel good temporarily. But no matter how many good things we do, we are still hurt by the bad things we do. We are hurt by our sin. And that hurt is a wound that only Jesus's sacrifice could heal. Self-love is very close to the truth. 
we are worthy of love inherently, not because we've done something to earn it though, not because we're better than anyone else, not because of our good works, but because Jesus loves us, because God cares about us. No matter what you or anyone else says about you, God made you in his image and Jesus died for you. He gave up his life for you. That is the furthest thing from self-love that you can get. And Christians are called to deny ourselves, to turn the other cheek, to walk the extra mile, to go beyond obligation, even when it doesn't benefit you. Simply because treating others with respect and kindness is that important. The idea that Jesus died for me just so I could turn around, walk out the door, and be rude to someone I don't even know, let alone someone I do know, is so insulting. Especially when it's over something so small, like getting cut off in traffic. We all have the capacity to do good things. We all have the capacity to do bad things. That goes for all 8 billion people on this planet. How narrow-minded that any of us might consider ourselves to be the main character. Taking care of yourself so that you can take care of others is not selfish. But the idea that loving yourself and prioritizing yourself is the highest form of existence that you can achieve is not true and it should not be your goal. Selfishness and pride is the root of all evil in this world. Plenty of extremely wealthy celebrities could have anything that pleases them, anything that they desire, and they are still some of the most miserable, rude, and depressed people alive who are selfish and choose themselves all the time even when it is actively hurting other people. So don't get fooled by the lie that the purpose of life is to please yourself and obtain the things that you want for yourself. Basically, all I'm trying to say is it really doesn't matter how you motivate yourself or how you speak to yourself, whether in a gentle and compassionate way or in a harsh or strict way. All I want you to take away from this video is self-love is not the goal. It is not your purpose in this life. You will not be fulfilled by simply loving yourself more. Your problems will not be solved by it. And the less we think about ourselves, the better our life will be. Anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching.